Jared Polin fro knows photo dot com and I, I stayed the night at Mr. Adam Lerner's what do we call this place? An apartment? Yeah, loft. Loft, apartment, and all that good stuff in New York City after the photo show. So it's the morning and it's time. I don't know, Adam had a cool idea that we do a five minute portrait Polaroid edition. So why don't you pull out that Polaroid and tell us what we're doing? All right, so we have ourselves here a. All right! All right! <laughs> This is a, a Polaroid 450 automatic um, land camera. I think it's from 71. Yeah, before my time. Um, yeah. Is that before your time? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, it's kind of a nice camera. It was kind of, I think it was like one of Polaroid's top of the line consumer cameras. It's got this Zeiss Icon viewfinder. It's um, made out of like heavy aluminum is, is or this, metal. Is this the one that I showed you that I have also? You've got the 360, which is kind of like the cousin to this, right. which is a little bit older, but still probably on par with optics that's and awesome. functionality. That's cool feeling. Yeah. And you it, can get film for it these days. Yeah, and that's the thing. Fuji um, continues to make instant film, pack film for this. And it's actually, in the realm of things, it's, it's fairly inexpensive if you compare it to the Impossible Project. Right. You can get, I think, uh, 10 frames for like 9 bucks. Color in black and white. Uh, yeah, they Maybe make even... you they make you earn your shots. Yeah, and look, it's quirky, and I can tell you that there's often times when I'm not getting all the shots that I want to get. Um, I also, you know, was fortunate enough with this when I picked it up um, to also get the the close up kit. So I'm going to use the portrait kit or the portrait attachment here, and I'm going to put that on the camera. And, you know, it's it's kind of amazing to think that this was made so many years ago, and it, it's plastic, but it's nice plastic. It's actually nicely made. <laughs> you can get it on here. So what's the plan here? We're gonna do a couple of shots and then watch them develop, or what? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we'll do a you know a shot or two, and we'll see how it goes from there. Uh, I'm just gonna put this on the lens. All right. And so I don't know. Let's let's actually let's do it. Let's do it. So you, while you're shooting, I guess you'll talk about the settings and how it sets up, and uh, I'll be your subject. And this is going to be the five minute portrait edition. With a Polaroid land camera, 450, and some Fuji film. And, and the close-up or the portrait uh, attachment. Yep, portrait attachment. There All we right, go. let's do it. Portrait lens. Here we go. So we've got the, uh, the uh, portrait attachment on the camera here. And this is a rangefinder camera, which is a really uh, strange camera to focus because you essentially have a little um, square that you focus by sliding these two things across. And you can see that the bellows are moving when you're sliding them. And when the, the little square lines up, you know, as best as you can possibly see it, then you're in focus. You depress this button right here and you lock it into place to get your shutter ready. And then when you're ready to depress the shutter, you hit this. Everything has a number on it. Yes. And when you look in the manual, it'll say, you know, press number three to, you know, activate your shutter. Um, it's got this, it, this is an automatic camera, so basically it's got this little electronic eye that kind of, you know, understands the exposure and it takes these crazy batteries that have snaps on them, which you can still get. Okay, so right now I've got the portrait attachment on here and what that does is that it basically compresses things a little bit so that I can have more of a portrait type of shot You're do for both. Jared. And we will do both. So right now I'm going to focus and, you know, I can say that it's, it's not the easiest thing because you have to be able to really see what's going on over here and um, let's just see how that's going uh, one sec I'd say that's about it right there actually tell me one so I don't blink for a Polaroid <laughs> alright alright one two three that's it I made sure not to blink so now what are you gonna do you pull it now I wait pull 20 it. seconds and then and pop it's it? kind of a violent thing I mean this is not like there's nothing really delicate about this. So you pull this out here, and while this is out, it's developing. Now what I should really do, it's got a timer on the back that works occasionally because it's old. I'll just start this and I'm going to run it about 20 seconds. So why don't you switch lenses? And I'm just going to heat this up. Oh, you are? Just under my arm. Okay. And I'm trying not to squish it because I don't really want to, you know, squish the processing, which well, is not that hard to do. I mean, what's going on in there is... Uh, I, there's a chemical reaction. There's a chemical, and when you pull it, the chemicals spread out across... Well, there's the rollers in there. The, ro the rollers when you pull it, it pushes the chemical onto the um, emulsion, I guess. Yeah. 
and the exposed area, and it bonds the two together. As yeah. you, so you're basically controlling that when you pull it out of there. All right. And sometimes it's not even, and other times it is even. And literally, it takes 20 seconds to pull this. Right. A little bit longer when it's colder out. It's a little colder today. Now I'm going to pull it apart and see what we got. And there we go. <laughs> nice. Yeah, we'll pop it up on the screen. Now, you don't have to put any activator on the uh, deactivator, right? I love the... It's a little bit dark. Um, I would probably do it again and just make it, maybe lighten it up a little bit. Wow. Well, whatever you want to do. Yeah, let's do another one. I've never really used and it. How about the close-up attachment? Well, you want to go with a wider one and try it? Or do you want to try again? Let's try it again with, the, with this one. And I'm just going to... Because it's a dollar a pop. That's all right. You're, wor <laughs> you're worth it, man. Thanks. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lighten this up. I'm going to go all the way to the lightest setting here. Oh, my God. Can you smell the chemicals? Yeah. You don't even want to touch that. And let's try this again. And uh, is the framing exact or it's not exact? It's not through the lens, so no, it's not exact. Exactly. It's not exact. You, cock, you didn't cock your shutter. Exactly. Well, I was just trying to focus oh, there. So shutter cocked. Cocked and locked. Has to stay down. Cocked okay? and locked. Cocked Pump and in the locked. pink. All right. So let's try this again. And then, are you gonna like one, two, three? Great. Do you like recompose in there, knowing that you have an extra? Like, do you like look and then lower the camera because you know that the viewfinder is moving? A little bit. So, yeah. So let's pop this. All right. So I'm gonna start that. Whoop. All right. So I'm using the iPhone here uh, to time it because I want to kind of get my. Timing relatively close. Again, the Polaroid has an electronic timer here, which, because it's old, you know, works only occasionally. All right, so there's our time. Do you ever undercook or overcook it? Always. You know, it's so much. It's dependent on temperature. It's dependent on humidity. So many factors here. Let's pull this apart and see. I know we used to squeeze it through our fingers. Oh, that's a little better. And the composition is. Oh yeah. And you know, sometimes it just, it, you know, you have to take a few shots to get to where you want to go. And that was the whole point with Polaroids. We would take them as like samples. Wow. <laughs> Great color on that. Yeah. <laughs> I honestly think though that, um, that the, uh, that that lens or that lens attachment might be um, not as sharp. Well, let's pop it off and let's do the other one. Hi, Guido. Hey, puppy. All right, let's try that. So Hi, puppy. I'm taking the uh, viewfinder component off of the viewfinder. The viewfinder attachment. Yeah. Hang on. Come on. Try not to break it. Yeah, try not to break something from 71. It's just, it's just made it's so solid that it seems impossible that you could break wow. it. Wow, uh, I, I would guess to say that the lens wouldn't be as sharp. I mean, you're putting a piece of plastic over a piece of plastic. That's glass. Put a piece, a piece of glass. glass over a piece of glass. It's actual glass. So how much wider is this now? Let's see. Um, it's considerably wider and it actually looks a lot brighter. Can we go with like a full wide to get the sofa or no? Sure. Like from back low angle? I know I'm directing again, but... Yeah, you can't help yourself. All right, let's see how this looks from over here. Do you want me to do anything different? Um, let me just see the focusing. About right over there. Yeah, you don't really need to do much. Um, I would say maybe do the hands thing. You know how you like, you like to do the hands, like the... That? Yeah, we'll do that. All right, let's see. Okay, cocking the shutter. Click. <laughs> Got my focus locked in as best as I think I can. Hang on. Somewhere around there. So hard to see. All right. And I've got my framing set, so now we're going to go one, two, three. Cool. Now, pull this puppy apart. Three dollars spent. Yep. Start the timer. Come on. Boop. Put it under the heater. Yep. I'm trying not to squish it. I mean, I... I used to, we used to sit there and go like this with it. Yeah. We used to sit there and put our fingers and run it through it just to, just to make it, uh, I don't know, evenly develop. Right. Did you change your uh, light settings at all? No. There's, I mean, there's not a lot that you can do with that. It just is what it all is. All right. 
let's get this open and see what we got. So you overcooked a little bit. Just a little bit because it's cold. That's cool. I think I think and there's something I'm doing something with squishing the uh, frame. Wow. Yeah, I mean, is that the best? It's going to get color-wise? That's just what you get out of this stuff, right? I think we could honestly do better. Um, you know, it's not, it's not the best. It's not the worst. Um, I think the very first, first one is actually pretty cool. But, you know, it's going to develop a little bit more. And um, I would say leave everything on the table. The way that actually is. looks a little bit better. I want to take a picture of the table. That looks a little bit better, actually. All right, so you want to sit down and discuss this after the uh, that's act angle? that's actually my favorite right now. Um, I think that looks really cool. Well, let's change angles and we'll talk about it. All right, all right, sounds good. Thank you. I mean, that's cool. I, I want to try. Do you want a picture of you? Yeah, absolutely. All right, let me take a picture before we change angles. But leave everything. I love the way the table looks right now. Well, that's part of it. I mean, let's do it. All, all right, right let me, switch. Let me put my so now it's, it's my turn. Adam just did $3 worth of pictures for me. And it's my turn to pop out a couple, maybe one or two Polaroids. Um, I have like 15 to 20 Polaroids at home that I used to collect as a kid when I would go to garage sales with my mom. I would just buy Polaroids for some reason. And Adam told me that I've got some sets that are actually good and usable. And I'm going to try to set that stuff up to use it. Um, but now I'm going to figure this out. All I know is it's pretty much like three things and, you're, and, you, and you go. Focus, slide back and forth, cock the shutter, press the button. Yeah. Why is three, why is three, why do you cock the shutter? Why is it three instead of like one, or sorry, focus should be one. I think focus Focus is one. one. Two shouldn't be shooting. Two should be cocking the shutter. What was Mr. Land thinking? I don't know. So which way do I need to go? If it's higher, I need to raise the camera slightly, right? To get you composed to where I want it? You'll see through there. You'll see the parallax lines, and you just want... Whatever you're framing is going to be in those parallax lines. Oh. See, see what I'm saying? And then that little square in the center, you know, it's hard. You want to find a line that you can kind of line up with. Cock the shutter. Ooh, snap. Right, and that has to lock down. Yeah, that's fine, Ed. Hold that. I didn't do that. You... Ah. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself. Well, I'm putting my eye right through the camera. Alright, that's not focused. I think that's focused. Here we go. Do I want to lower the camera at all? You don't have to go crazy. It's not like a DSLR. I know, but I'm trying to get my composition. You ready? Yep. One, two... Shit. <laughs> Oops, bleep. One, two, three... Awesome. All right. Let me do this. All right. That was interesting. I, I saw the composition the way I wanted it. Now it's just a matter of if it actually worked properly. So we'll just get the timer out just to get ready. Yeah. Pull that through. I think I was even focused. As you soon know, as we pull through the, these, the rollers here, it starts to develop. Boom. You're going to heat it up again? Heat it up again. Well, I want to heat it up. Yeah? It's gentle. Oh, yeah. Do I get to pull it? Sure. Come on, timer! <laughs> the anticipation is killing you! I just spent a dollar. I want to see what it looks like. Uh, we're good, right? Yeah. We're good. So you... you I, used to pull, I used to pull it from here. Really? Yeah. All right. Do it I used to just sit here and go like this. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> hey, now. That came out cool. I love the light on that, actually. I really, I love it. I just wish there was so much more color. But you got all this in there. I wanted to get that in there. Okay, cool. That was my idea, but, was to compose. But there'll be a little bit more color, but that's actually really nice. I like, yeah, I like your angle. I like how you're sitting there. I mean, that's what I, I love the way the light's hitting the side of my head. But you see how I went wider? I wanted to get the table. I wanted to get the background in. We just said something's happening here. And yeah, that's the rollers. The I think rollers. I need, I need to clean the rollers. The rollers aren't meeting properly. That's why you're getting no, they're that. No, di they're dirty. But that's okay. I mean, you're technically you're supposed to clean the rollers after each pack that you shoot. Right, right. So, all right. Well, all right. Let's sit down. Note to self. Talk about it. Don't change anything because I want to take a picture of this table, okay. even with the iPhone on it. Cool. All right. So that definitely was interesting and fun to shoot through. I, 
we got to set my camera up. I really want to use it. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I've been so excited about using this camera. And I've been using it for a whole bunch of different stuff. And, um, you know, the results are, are really quirky. I mean, it's not, it's not like an easy camera to use. No. Would you think that shooting outside in daylight will give you a much better, colorful, more colorful image? Or is this film just... Absolutely. It daylight, will. daylight. Because it's got that electronic sensor, which, you know, meters for the light or senses the light, and it adjusts the exposure accordingly. Hmm. Um, the other thing that's really cool about this camera is that Fuji makes a 3000 ISO black and white. Which we basically should. they say that if you can, if if you've got enough light to read by, then you can shoot with that film. And I've done a little bit with it, and it's really cool. It's the shutter slows down a bit, so you have to kind of be careful how you hold the camera. But and it's really grainy, but it looks awesome. The tones are beautiful. I want to try that out. Yeah, definitely. I mean, so this was interesting. I mean, and the real purists out there are like you know hunting on eBay and other sites. For the uh, the old Polaroid six six nine film, I think. Are we going to take this in the Lightroom? Absolutely. Oh, you tweak it still? Yeah, just a little bit. Maybe I should. We should I'm going to shoot an Instagram of it. You know why I take it into Lightroom? Because the scanner only does such a good job. You know, I don't have like some high end pro scanner. We should take a picture. Yeah. Instead of scanning it. Sure, you can take a digital picture. What would be better, a digital picture or a scanner? Oh, I have an idea. I think a scan is probably going to get you the 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 most workable result. Because we, it, you know, I have an idea. Okay. <laughs> maybe you could do it. Or maybe when, after I head back to the show, just leave all four on the table and do just a shot of four. Just four. You know, like... Take the macro out. Just, yeah, but get all four on, in on the table and that's it. Yeah. That would be cool. That would be cool. And scan them so we can use them and put them up on the screen. Obviously, as the picture's taken, we're showing people what it looks like. Right. And, uh, you know, there's a whole, there's a whole host of these um, old Polaroid cameras out there. I mean, there's the 100 series, 200 series, 300 series, 400 series. <laughs> I have one of every series. Right. And all of them are viable. You know, it just as you, as you went up in the series, you know, the build quality was a little better. This actually has a tripod mount. I was going to ask that. The yeah. finder's a little bit nicer on this one. Because some of the finders are, you know, you know this one has actual glass. So, so I guess the important thing is when you're out looking for a Polaroid is if the bellows is, is good condition... And the shutter cocks and shoots, you're good, but you also want to check the battery door and make sure that the old battery's still not corroded in there. Right. If, if you open the back of the camera and you, and you depress the shutter, you can actually see the aperture opening. That's right. a really good sign, okay? Um, also, like you said, when you open the battery door, you want to make sure there's not corrosion in there. You want to see that the rollers actually, you know, have, they're still stiff, but they, they're not like completely frozen and right. there's not just gunk caked on them. Look, if it's clean throughout, it's, it's you know, and, it, and, and it's, you know, well under, you know, under a hundred bucks. Yeah. And how much is the film? It's all, it's, well, you said it's a dollar a pack. At, at, at one of the bigger shops, you can get the, the, the film for about $8 for 10 exposures. That's not bad. It's fun. I, you know, I, what I like about it, it's like Instagram. It's kind of like the old school Instagram because it's something that's a challenge. It's a new form of photography that, that I haven't used that, makes it a challenge to go create with it. And that's what I love doing is creating yep. with everything. So I'm going to get my camera set up at home. Yep. When I'm going on shoots, I try to snap off a few of these as well as the digital stuff. So I'm going to try some black and white in color. Awesome. And but, you can get the black and white in 100 speed as well. All right. So this was fun. Five minute portrait Polaroid edition. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Jared. Thanks for having me anyway <laughs> last night as well after the party. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's the five-minute portrait edition using a Polaroid camera. I uh, hope you liked it. You can check out on eBay, I'm, I'm sure, or local places for some of these Polaroids, and that's about it. All yeah. right. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.